In a protected national park, former wetlands are being colonised by gum trees. What we're seeing here in terms of the vegetation is the slow death of a wetland. The decline of Thirlmere Lakes has long concerned scientists. This acacia, which really is not a, not a wetland plant at all, this should be underwater. Six years ago, low lake levels were attributed to drought. But in 2016, after good rains, the two largest lakes are now completely empty. Where we're standing now, there used to be people canoeing above our head. Dr Philip Pells has monitored the lake's water tables for more than five years. He says depressurisation from mining is to blame. There's a strong body of evidence now that groundwater loss to the coal mine is impacted on the lakes. Instead of them being filling after significant rainfall events, they've hardly come up at all. Nearby, the Tarmore mine pumps up to 2,000 megalitres of water each year from deep underground. Glencore, the owner, says it's committed to mine responsibly and that current operations are more than 13 kilometres from the lakes. It's also participated in previous inquiries, which found climate-based influences. Ecologist Richard Kingsford has also studied the lake's behaviour, using old photos to create 3D contour maps. There was no signal in the floods and droughts. This was a long-term decline. And the decline happened relatively soon after coal mining started here in the 1980s. He's alarmed that thriving wildlife has disappeared. Yeah, I mean, it's very hard to see how a long-lived plant like this will actually come back. Jeopardising hard-won world heritage status. We really need to confess to the world community that we haven't done a very good job here. Wallandilly Councillor Cole Mitchell says authorities must respond fast. I think it's got to be done and like it's, it's, it's pretty urgent. It is very urgent. It's something to be done straight away. Not have reports about it, but do it. Environment Minister Mark Speakman was unavailable for interview. A spokesperson told the ABC while new studies were plausible, further work by government scientists would provide more definitive data. Three small lakes survive with low levels, but if the water plummets further, this tourist destination faces a costly rescue. If we can get the water back in here, it'll bring it back to life. We'll get this incredible place with hot spot for biodiversity with water birds and frogs, but also places that people can swim. And it's only a stone throw from Sydney. An ancient natural system crying out for an urgent modern solution. Greg Miskelly, ABC News.